Hi, I'm Danny. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm talking about automobile air conditioning systems and the steps that I take to determine why an air conditioning system isn't working or isn't cooling properly. I have plenty of videos on this subject on my YouTube channel, but I still seem to get a lot of questions. I'm going to try to simplify the diagnostic process for you. Hopefully this will help you to diagnose your own air conditioning system and help you avoid costly repairs. If you could do me a big favor and hit the like and subscribe button or share this with someone that you think could benefit from this information, I would greatly appreciate it. I also put together a playlist on air conditioning and cooling fan problems since they do fall under the same category. I'll add a link to those videos in the description below, as well as all the parts and tools I use in this video. There's a lot of different scenarios that can cause your air conditioning system to lack cooling. I'll cover as much of that as I can in this video. I also suggest you go back and watch my other videos on the AC and cooling fans. Today, I'll be performing this on my 2009 Honda Civic EX, but the same procedure can be used for many other makes and models. My first step is to do an AC system check on the control head. This will check for any malfunctions in the air delivery system by displaying codes. I also have two videos on diagnosing these codes and will be adding more soon. So make sure you subscribe. Let's get started. Whenever you have a problem with the heater or the air conditioner or the air delivery, the first check you need to make is at the control head. We need to see if that control head has any codes. To do that, you hold the recirc and the rear defogger down and you turn on the key. It's gonna go through a series of checks and then it'll flash some codes if there are some codes. We're just gonna hold this down and let it do its thing. This is flashing code one. It flashes once, then it pauses, and then it flashes once again. Then it pauses and it'll continue doing this. Here's a list of the nine codes that the control head is capable of displaying. If you're interested in watching the videos I've already created for codes one, two, three, the air mix motor in codes four, five, the mode control motor, I'll put a link to those in the description. I'll also be adding more videos at a later date, so make sure you subscribe. Next, I'll install a scan tool to check to see why the AC isn't working properly. This is the new launch Creator Elite version 2.0. I did a complete video on this bi-directional scan tool. It's also under $200 and it's made for Honda and Acura vehicles and it works great. Let me show you how this works to diagnose AC systems. What we're going to do is we're going to check for codes first. And we have no trouble codes, so we're going to exit that. And then we're going to go to actuator test. And for AC, we can hear the AC clutch. Let's see if that turns on. And here's the value, it's off right now. Let's see if that changes. Here it is, it's on, and I heard a click. Off, on, off. So I hear it clicking, and it says it's on and off, so I know my AC clutch is turning on and off. So let's exit here. Let's see what other test I can do here. Radiator fan, that's a good one. Let's check to see if my radiator fans are coming on. There we go. So let's turn it on. Right now it says off. So it's on, let's exit. Now let's back up and let's go down to data stream. So now let's pick out AC clutch, AC pressure switch, 
AC pressure switch voltage, the AC control head switch, and let's look for anything else that has to do with AC on here. There's a lot of stuff on here that you can actually look at. Um, some of it doesn't apply to this car, but it applies to many other cars. So let's just keep going until we see anything to do with our AC. Okay, so engine coolant temperature sensor one, and that's important. Engine coolant temperature sensor one voltage, because this car has two temperature sensors and not all scan tools read individually on these. They just kind of put them together, which is, is doesn't help when you're starting to diagnose something. So this is a good scan tool. Um, let's look for fans. There it is, fan low and fan high. So we've got all that data. We're going to say OK. And now I'm going to start the vehicle and let's see what we see here. All right, so we're going to turn on the AC system. And you can see everything change. So AC clutch is on. The AC pressure sensor, 155. That'll kind of be the same as if you had a gauge on it. And that would be the high pressure on the high side. We have the uh, sensor voltage. The AC switch, this is the control head. I'm going to shut it off. And it turns off. So I just checked the control head. Turn it on, and it's on. Engine coolant temperature one, it's 145 degrees. There's the voltage, 1.2. Engine coolant sensor temperature two, 82 degrees. And I did a whole video on this. I'll link it in the description um, on where those sensors are and what all this data means and how to check it manually too. I did all that on a different video. So here's another one, fan high. So the fan high right now is off. Let's see if we can get that to come on. It may not. Let's turn up the, okay, so the low fan is on right now. Okay, the, the high fan just came on and now it went off. So it's cycling with the air conditioner. But look at the, all the information on this tool that you can get. I love this tool. I've got my gauges here. They're not hooked up yet. I'm going to show you how to hook them up. The problem with my vehicle is when I'm driving down the road on a hot day, my AC just isn't keeping up. Now, I know it's low on Freon because when I pull my Schrader valve caps off, I can hear just a little hissing noise as I pull them off. And that tells me my Schrader valves are actually leaking. I also know I need an expansion valve in here. And I'm not ready to do that today. I've done it in a different video and I'll put a link to that in the description. But in today's video, what I want to do is I want to show you how to add some Freon um, and what the gauges mean and what a good reading is. If you want to pick up a set of gauges, I put a couple in the description of ones from Amazon that I think are affordable and work pretty well. To hook up the gauges, you just take the Schrader valve caps off. So this is the high side. This is the high pressure and you can see an H right here. This is going to be the low pressure side and the low pressure is a bigger tube. And this is going to have an L right here. And that's going to be a blue for the low pressure. And you want to make sure these are closed and not open. So the low is just going to pop on there like that. The high side's going to be red. And once again, make sure it's closed and not open. And what we're going to do is these open up. They're just quick connects. Open it up, push it on, and you're good. Now, what you want to do is you want to open these up. There's the low side. And then this is the high side. 
Now, if I look at the gauges here, it says it's about 90 PSI of pressure on the high side and 90 on the low side. So that means I have Freon in the system. So it's 90 because it's probably, it's probably 85, 90 degrees in our garage here. And that's what pressure is gonna be. Pressure is basically gonna follow ambient temperature of the day that you're doing this. So this tells me that I have Freon in the system and probably enough to turn on that compressor. And that's true because my compressor does turn on. You can also see that they're even. So since they're even, that means there's no blockage in the system. So the high side and the low side has that expansion valve. It seems to be working fine. If there was a blockage, I would see a lower pressure in one side than I do on the other when it's just sitting ambient temperature with the engine and the compressor not running. And that's what we're at. So this tells me I have Freon in here, but probably not enough. So let's fill it up. Now to add Freon, you're gonna need the correct type of Freon. Now under your hood, there should be a sticker and it'll tell you the Freon type and the amount it would take if it was empty. But we're not empty. So we just need to know the exact type it takes. And then you're gonna buy like a little hose like this and some Freon. Or if you have the gauges, you can do it a different way. And let me show you how we're gonna do it with gauges. All right, so we have our low side here. This is low pressure and it's closed. We have our high pressure side here and that's also closed. And to charge it, we need to use this middle port. So I've got a hose right here and I'm gonna go hook up the middle port here. And like I said earlier, these pressures are both the same because the car is not running. As soon as I start the car, this pressure is gonna go low and this pressure is gonna go a lot higher. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up. And these are both closed. And then you're gonna need a little valve here that goes on the can. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. And then when I screw this down, Freon's gonna be able to come out. We're gonna put this yellow hose on this side here. And these are closed. So once I open up the can, Freon's gonna come through into this hose and it's gonna get stopped right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and screw this down. And once it becomes all the way down here, I just heard the Freon go into the hose. Now you can buy these cans with dye and I would always suggest to buy them with dye. That way if it leaks out, then you'll know exactly where the leak is. I didn't do it this time because I did it last time I put a charge in there and I know where my leak is. It's leaking at the Schraders because I could see the green dye when I used the dye light. Also, don't get it with the stop leak. That'll just plug up your system. So now that I have the Freon in the hose, I'm gonna purge it. So on the can, um, every can, some of them want you to do it upside down. Some of them want you to do it right side up. Others 45 degree angle and others, they just want you to shake it. This one says shake it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna shake it up as we purge the line. We don't want air in our AC system. So what we'll do is we'll just remove this Schrader right here. And then what I need to do is just go ahead and, and don't forget your safety glasses and your gloves. So I'm just gonna purge this line a little bit until I see Freon. There it is, there it is. So now it's purged. So we're gonna start it up and let's see what everything looks like here. Turn on the AC.
right so we're about 90 degrees in the garage and about 71 degrees 72 degrees so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let a little bit of free on in Shut it, and now I need to just let it stabilize a little bit. We're at 66. I'm going to add a little bit more. Maybe about four seconds. Shut it off. About 54, it's still dropping. And I'll go one more time. About three seconds here. down and I just let that sit for about five minutes and see where it ends up so my low side is about 34 degrees my high side 150 degrees and we're about 44.6 degrees this is probably as good as it's going to get. Let me go ahead and shut her down and we'll call this complete. Now, just to let you know, this is a Band-Aid. This isn't the correct way to do it. The correct way would be to suck all the Freon out, evacuate the system, fix any leaks you have, and then recharge it with the specified amount that's on the hood label. This is just a cheap and quick fix. And I'm going to get to the correct way to fix it in a later video, but I just don't have time. It's getting towards the end of summer and I just want to get my car to blow as good as it can blow at this point. So I'm going to disconnect my gauges and call this complete. I hope you got something out of today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. The main takeaway here is just add a little bit of Freon at a time. Don't overfill, that could cause other problems. I'll have gauges and other parts in the description so you can purchase off Amazon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Don't